بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم brothers and sisters and welcome to Al-Bayan Live we're live from Bayan Radio Studios on this Wednesday evening I'm your host Abu Abdurrahman and I'm very pleased to be joined by my dear brother Sheikh Jamil Al-Biza السلام عليكم Sheikh Wa alaykum as-salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh excuse the croaky voice uh, subhanallah back at uh, you know back in the classroom huh Yes, the voice is almost gone. Alhamdulillah, <laughs> you know, with the winter season and, and, and the rest of it. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah. We, we're better, but Alhamdulillah, we, the show must continue. Tuhur, inshallah. Barakallah feek, barakallah feek. Uh, once again, it's good to be back live with the brothers and sisters, live on Facebook, live on LBN Radio's apps and Wi-Fi devices, online as well. Please leave your comments, feedback, suggestions on our Facebook page there, and we'll try to get to them, in the ta'ala. Once again, it's good to have Sheikh Jamil with us. A lot has happened since last week. The masajid have officially reopened. Sheikh Jameen, how's that been? Subhanallah. I think uh, when they first announced uh, the uh, uh, masjid committees and the mas- and the imams all rushed to sit down, you know, on the drawing board and, and, and start going, okay, how's this going to work? Alhamdulillah, yani the majority of the masajid I know have opened up. Um, Jum'ah is a test and that's coming up this Friday. Mm, 50, um, yeah. The 50 and everybody's still asking the questions, calling up, you know, the the you know, the state uh, representatives, the New South Wales government. And, you know, what do they mean by 50? Is it each room? Is it each section? Is it each level? And, and so we're all rushing. And wallahi, every time I see uh, the messages and the, the posts and everybody talking about it, it only proves one thing. It proves that Alhamdulillah, they're almost still alive. Uh, okay, this enough. is this is very very important. Uh, it's like uh, you know putting your fingers on the pulse of the ummah, um, and to see them reacting in that way uh, in anticipation for uh, the message of Allah Taala to be open and, and functioning as it was, um, it is a good sign. It is a good sign. And Alhamdulillah, these the fifty is a lot better than the ten, and the ten was a lot better than closure. And inshallah, we're waiting for the next one. It was beautiful praying in the masjid again. Yes, yeah, subhanAllah. It is a ni'mah that we must make the most of. Oh, of course, of course, of course. It is, uh, yeah, and it's, it's a ni'mah I think majority of the brothers, um, even some of the sisters that were regular at the masjids for the lessons and some of the prayers, uh, realize that how, how much the, the masjid uh, and he, uh, plays a positive role in our life. It, it, it gives us grounding. It, it's, a, it's like a fa'lan, it's the qibla. The Qibla mm. of the Muslims, like the Kaaba, uh, is the Qibla of the Muslims in prayer. The Masjid is the Qibla of the hearts, uh, I think, in the community. And we're going to get to it. This is a, the, our topic for tonight, the importance of the Masjid. You can even tell it, the virtues of the Masjid, whatever yeah. you like. And really, where do you start with this beautiful topic? But a lot has happened in, in the past week, and we have to you know, pretty much touch upon it. Yeah. What's happening in America and what's starting to happen in Australia, or what's happening in America with... You know, all the riots and, and yeah. the protests, probably yeah. a better word than the riots, the the protests that's happening since uh, that gentleman lost his life in a very brutal fashion, to yeah. say the least, yeah. um, with the, the knee of the policeman on his knee for minutes upon minutes, and yeah. then he, he, he died. And uh, really, whoever saw the video, and it, 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 was it brutal, really, really was sad. A sound heart uh, detests uh, oppression. Oppression upon anyone, even op- upon uh, you know uh, you know wild beasts. Yeah. Oppression is oppression. Uh, what's happening in America is um, it is like the pressure valve going off. Sadly, it's not going to change uh, what's happening on the ground. It's not going to change some of the the mentalities of these individuals. But what it does show, and it shows the world, and especially the Muslims, is that uh, you know oppression uh, has a, you know has a limit. And oppression has a as a you know, use by date, you know. The, oh, there's there's gonna be a, a time when it turns back onto the oppressor. That's a given. Uh, what we as Muslims, I think, first and foremost, we should realize that uh, what's happening in Syria hasn't stopped. What's happened in Iraq hasn't stopped. What's Gaza, happening in Gaza it hasn't stopped. What's happening around the world hasn't stopped. This is a sidetrack uh, media, but it shouldn't be a sidetrack for the Muslims. Uh, but do we, when we look at this, do we turn our heads away and say, you know, whatever happens, happens, let them, you know, do whatever happens over there? Uh, as a Muslim, we always side with the haq. That's right. uh, wherever the, 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 there's an oppressor uh, and there's the oppressed. The Muslim is always with the oppressed. So we are against injustice in all its forms. All of its forms, the Muslims. And that is why uh, يعني Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, so, يعني, so. He, he, you know, I think raised in this ummah, this sense of, you know, fighting for justice, you know, wherever it is, fighting for the haq, wherever it is, fighting against those who oppress where, whoever they are. Uh, and that is why Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam even said to the, to the Muslims, help your brother, uh, whether he is the oppressed or the oppressor. 
So even if he's the oppressor, we're still there uh, involved. Even if he's our brother, they by, said, Ya Rasulullah. Stopping him, yeah. Exactly. We, we understand how to help our brother when he's being oppressed. But how is he, how are we going to help when he's being the oppressor? He said, you take by the hand. Meaning you stop them. You stop them. What's happening in America is, is honestly just a, uh, any, uh, you know, a, a, a group of people that are very angry about what's happening. Uh, and, and sadly, what happened to uh, George Floyd is not uh, you know, uh, 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 an incident that just happened. It's been happening, yeah. and it continues to happen. Uh, and it's not, it's, this one's just been caught on camera. And you mentioned it there, people are sick of nothing happening afterwards. Exactly. This is what happens. What happens is no that. No change. Exactly. And so when you see, even when you see what happened in the, in the Muslim world, the problem is, is that oppression, like I said, has a use by date. It has mm. to change. And all, all you know, uh, oppressive uh, regimes, they have an end. Whether it's 10 years, 20 years, 100 years, it's going to come to an end. If Pharaoh came to an end, you know, uh, you know, how many, all the, the the, the, everybody in history came to an end through uh, the will and power of Allah SWT. And the will is important, meaning when Allah SWT shat. So whatever we're doing, uh, if Allah SWT doesn't will it to, to change, it's not going to change. If Allah SWT wills it to change, it will change even if it was from the simplest uh, of reasons. So we, we must keep our brothers and sisters in our du'a. Uh, especially those who are being oppressed, and the spotlight isn't pretty much on them at all. Yeah, because yeah. Uh, that's of, the, the of certainly the, different the, the, reasons and the you know the the hypocrisy is when you see those who oppress uh, siding with uh, you know the uh, those who are getting oppressed, but in a different area, mm. and this is what's happening. You know, you have those who are uh, oppressors in their own right, uh, but then they start to chant uh, you know uh, slogans of of support. For those who are being oppressed in America. Yeah, I mean, you're an oppressor. What you're doing to our brothers and our sisters uh, is worse than what these people uh, have done to these individuals. But we ask Allah Taala to allow it to pass. Muslims are being affected in, in America. And we ask Allah Taala that it does safeguard our, our brothers and our sisters in America. And it does bring justice around the world. Yani wherever justice is, yani, uh, as a Muslim, we, we look for it, we support it, and we uh, you know, you know, try to allow it to be established. And that's the, the point of and I think what we what we should be calling to, and also just to, um, a final point there that that as Muslims there is no difference between black and white or yeah, red course, and yellow. Of course, of course. In yeah. Allah at Qalqum. Look, yani, we're not going to shy away from the fact that yani uh, racism uh, in all its forms is present in every community. Yani, a lot of people they come out and they say, you know, Haram, what's happening with these black people? Yani, this is. Yeah, I mean, look at your own self, look at your own you know, families, look at the way you speak about individuals. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. Malish, we're in the Lebanese community. Uh, yeah, I mean, you look at a person that lives down the road because he's in another area, another a town, <laughs> speaks differently, looks differently. He's like, yeah, I mean, so, so we don't want to just hold up slogans. As a Muslim, we're not supposed to be just you know uh, shouting out slogans. If you want to and, f- and really are against uh, racism uh, and bigotry in all of its form, then you need to start from home. And Muhammad Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam started from home, where he would not favor anyone, uh, you know, whether they're rich, poor, uh, close to the family, far from the family. It doesn't matter. The way he supported uh, Bilal radiallahu anhu, the way he spoke against uh, uh, Fatima radiallahu anha when he said that by Allah, if Fatima was to, she didn't do anything. She's innocent. She's sitting at home. But he's using her as an example that doesn't matter how close she is, to the leader of this nation, the nation of, يعني, of of the Muslims, doesn't matter how close she is to me. If she was to do an act that is, you know, that is wrong, that's unlawful, she'd be then punished. I would, she would be punished. It is the own beloved daughter. Exactly, and, and Muhammad Sallam taught us this. You know, with Sahib al Rumi, with you know, with all of the companions. You know, Salman al Farisi. He actually said that Salman al Farisi is of me. He's of me, bringing them closer. But even the ones that were so close, like his uncle, uh, he was from Quraysh. When he was an oppressor, he pushed him away. And even if they're not Muslim, if they're being oppressed, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi would support them. And if they were upon justice and haq, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi would defend them and bring them closer. Look at his uncle, died upon, uh, n- not Islam, died upon the, the millah of, uh, you know, of the people of Quraysh. But Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi uh, stayed with him, uh, keep calling it to Islam, didn't belittle him, didn't attack him, just kept on asking him to, to of course, you know, uh, seek the, the hidayah from Allah SWT. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah for the ni'am of Islam, Ameen. which is very, uh, very hack and balanced in all issues of our lives. Unbelievable, Allah. unbelievable. Wallahi, if we would look at, at all the problems in the world today, Islam is the solution. And I say this, Wallahi, I say this, uh, anyone 
that from their, their own family, their own little situation, up until uh, you know uh, nations uh, and superpowers, <laughs> if they were to follow Islam and the teachings of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, they would be successful. They would be successful. But Subhanallah, يعني, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala does not will it for it to happen, and we ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala that He brings justice wherever it is. I mean, now let's get to our topic for tonight: the importance of the masjid. Big yes. topic. Where do we start? Subhanallah. I think where we should start is where Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam started. Is that this is the, uh, the the you know the the center point of community? So Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he migrated uh, from Mecca, came in towards Medina. Uh, he he stopped in a place called Quba. Um, there he established the prayer, and there he established uh, even Salat al Jum'ah. He established there, and and that's where the the, the masjids began to be built uh, in the sense. And then from there, he moved on from uh, Quba, uh, a few kilometers down, and he uh, came into Medina. And uh, the famous story of when Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came into Medina, and they all welcomed Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and Abu Bakr radiAllahu anhu. And then Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's she camel, Al Qaswa, um, uh, was actually you know uh, chosen by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala to then direct them where Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's home and masjid would be built. Um, and so uh, this occurred. And the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was established. So we noticed that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, basically through his action, was teaching us that for any nation to be uh, strong, stable, uh, protected, safeguarded, uh, established, it needs to have a masjid. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is then linking that house, that structure, that building, doesn't matter what it's made out of. Inshallah is made out of marble, gold. Inshallah is made out of you know stone, or so it's made out of wood and, and palm leaves. But it is the house of Allah. It is the house of Allah. And so when it is linked to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, it is special in its own right. So when even Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, informs us through Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that the most beloved places on earth to Allah Subhanahu wa Taala are His houses. This is in itself, I think, uh, the starting point for us as Muslims. That when we uh, allow the masajid to be the center of our community for all of our affairs, then we start uh, you know, on, a, on a path of success. We see in the ayah, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجَدَ لِلَّهِ فَلَا تَدْعُوا The ulama here said, first of all, this is, uh, of course, given us a lot. It's only a few, a few words in the, in the ayah, but it's given us a lot of uh, you know, uh, discussion points. First thing is that, وَأَنَّ الْمَسَاجَدَ لِلَّهِ Okay, that means... Not only does it mean literally that the houses are, you know, these masajid, these places of prostration, are for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَا لَا It means, basically, uh, it is not befitting to call upon other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a place that is called a masjid uh, that we've assigned it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The same when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that the, the, the pious for the pious, the pure for the pure. Sometimes you see a pure person and he marries someone, and they're not pure. Then you go, subhanAllah, but Allah subhanahu wa tells you in the Qur'an. Al-tayyibin al-tayyibat, all right. Then how come this is The ulama said, basically, that it's only befitting that a person of good character should marry a person of good character. So you should do that. It's not like it's a command, that's, that's what's going to happen. That's a given. No. It means that you as a pious person only look for someone that is, that is pious. Uh, and the same when Allah subhanahu wa tells you that anyone who enters Mecca... Uh, he was amin. But then we see that people are getting robbed in Mecca, people are getting, you know, uh, pickpocketed in Mecca, people are getting even hurt in Mecca. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells you whoever enters Mecca, then he is safe. So hang on, isn't there contradiction? No. It means basically that anyone who enters Mecca, you need to understand that they have been given a promise that you as a person should never hurt anybody. That means they will be safe because you're not hurting anyone. So here as well, the masajid are for Allah. So it's reminding us that yes, this house is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but also at the same time that we only should be calling Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we're in there. And that's extremely important. So if we establish the place and we know why it's being established, uh, then we're on, the, we're on the right path, alhamdulillah. It shows the importance of tawheed here. Yeah. Ah, this is, but it's all tawheed. But it's all tawheed. From even the Prophet sallallahu masjid, uh, he said to the people, "Leave Qaswa." They all tried to, you know, drag Al Qaswa, uh, you know, to their different lands. And he said, "Leave her." She has been ordered, commanded by Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. It's not, it's not free will here. 
We're not waiting because, and, and some people say this, oh, uh, the, the, the animal chose the, the place. No. It was commanded by Allah SWT. So when it was walking around, it wasn't walking around lost. It knew exactly where to go. So much so that the, the, you know, the, 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 you know, the scholars would say that even when they, when they took her back up, when she sat, they took her back up. She walked around, walked around and came back to the same place and sat. And I truly believe, I truly believe that this you know, is for Muhammad's masjid. This is a nas. But if you look around the world, the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for them to be the most beloved to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that means they were chosen by Allah. They're chosen by Allah. So if something is chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we need to then, we need to then safeguard, protect, upkeep, uh, and make sure that it is built and then uh, stays as you know the reasoning behind it was its building and that is tawhid that is calling upon allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, and upon allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone so the, the masjid we can say is the centerpiece of the muslim town the centerpiece of the muslim's life oh definitely basically the heart definitely so much so that, uh, that muhammad sallallahu alaihi said that one of the reasons why a person will be shaded yawm al qiyamah uh, is that his heart is connected to the masjid and this is for the brother and the sister huh uh, the brother and the sister. Some sisters, their heart is connected to the masjid, but they know they can't always be there. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. JazakAllah khair. Now he's, used, he's using these small cups, which indicates that this team must be strong. If it, not, he's... he's as long as it's hot, wallah, it's, it's yeah. pretty cold, subhanAllah. As we know, in, in, since you're speaking about Saudi, this is how you get your tea in Saudi, huh? Yes, that's it. A bit more yellow. Yeah, a bit more, yeah. Uh, and, right? and, and strong as well, but it's nice, MashaAllah, alhamdulillah. JazakAllah khair, Rahman. He hasn't dropped the ball. Like Alhamdulillah, pre- no, he's pre- going well. He's going well. Uh, in the first ten minutes as well, which is good. Yeah. Yeah, good, good uh, delivery time there. Good timing. So the, the masjid is the centerpiece, the heart of the Muslim community. Definitely, definite. This definite. is really what we must uh, remind our brothers and sisters that when you're choosing a place to live, look for where the masjid is. If you notice, uh, communities a long time ago. Uh, we're opposite to what we do because, especially, we're living in the West. It's different. Now we're living in Australia, so we're going to be talking about the, you know, uh, the, the the actual situation here. But if you look at throughout history, the mosque will be the first to be built, <coughs> and then around the mosque, people will build their homes. Whereas in Australia, it's it's not like that. We find the place, we say this is what we're going to turn into a masjid, and Alhamdulillah, the masjid is either built, and some of them were and are, um, or what it is is that it's an an old church or a synagogue or a place of worship that the Muslims buy, alhamdulillah, turn into a masjid, or it's an old house or it's a vacant land, whatever the reason. So as a Muslim, our first response is that we need to do a hijrah. And the brothers say, okay, what do you mean hijrah? I mean, I thought hijrah finished. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi said there's no hijrah. No, no. Hijrah, uh, in his general sense, is leaving anything that is bad for Allah SWT. So leaving something, for the sake of Allah. Okay, so when a masjid is being established in your area, uh, so for instance here in, in Belmore, we have Masjid Al-Azhar, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, safeguard it and allow it to mm-hmm. continue its uh, its service for the community. Mm-hmm. So now I want to move to Belmore. Uh, or I want to come from any other place and I want to move to Sydney, uh, but I know in Belmore there's a masjid. Okay, so I try to get a house as close as I can to the masjid. Don't say, well, I have a car. It doesn't matter where I am. I, we can always drive to the masjid. It's not, it's not yeah. about that. It's not about that. Allah's telling you through Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that that is the best and most blessed place on earth to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Most loved, most blessed huh? is this place, this buqa, this place where the masjid is. So why don't I want to be close to it? So it's not about I can drive there. I want to be close to it. And so as a Muslim, we do that hijrah. And alhamdulillah, if you notice... Uh, around Australia, that's what's happening. Muslims actually do this, whether consciously or, or subconsciously, they want to get closer to the community, uh, and the community is closer to the masjid. So, alhamdulillah, the end result is the same. But the intention should be that I want to get closer to the to the masjid, and so yes, it, it but it becomes the actual center uh, of the community. And when you allow it to become the center of the community, then it plays a bigger role than that. And there also many have given given that advice where if you want your kids to remain steadfast by the will and permission of Allah, you then be active in their Muslim uh, in, the, in the masjid or Islamic center. Oh, of course, definitely from a young age. Definitely, but this is the responsibility, the responsibility of the the masjid uh, itself. It needs to accommodate. So it's not about just the masjid being the walls of the masjid. 
Uh, the masjid needs to be, uh, when we say it's the, the hub of the community and it's the center of the community, that means it needs to then play a role in that community. Uh, and the biggest problem that we have is that some masjids allow the masjid to be a place of only prayer. Uh, walk in, pray, leave. That's it, finished. No other activities, no other service. Whereas this is not the focal point. Muhammad Sallallahu era uh, and then the Khulafat that came after him and up until today, the masjid's role in the community is to bring the whole community together. Whether in marriage, whether in support, whether in counseling, whether in uh, you know child uh, you know uh, n- n- nurturing, uh, the lessons, the tahfid, the 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 actual then services, and then up until the final day, when you pray uh, upon the deceased and then you send them to the grave, the the masjid is the focal point of the community, and it should be that, uh, and and if we allow it to be that we will notice that our children are raised around the masjid and inside the masjid. Uh, the benefit of hearing the adhan, the benefit of hearing the iqama, the benefit of seeing uh, the, the, the musalleen standing in prayer, lining up, uh, facing towards the qibla, uh, following the imam as he says, Allahu Akbar, remembering that the this uh, term Allahu Akbar is that uh, Allah is greater than what I've left outside. Allah is greater than the play I was playing right now and I left it. Allah is greater than the job that I was doing and I left. Allah is greater than the family I've left at home. I've left for the sake of Allah to come to the masjid. Allah is greater than the money I could have been making while I'm in a taxi or an Uber or on the job site or wherever I am. Allah is greater. Allahu Akbar. Allowing your children to be raised upon that. Uh, there's no monetary uh, you know, uh, uh, an amount you can put to that. That is tarbiyah uh, in the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam allowed al-Hasan wal Hussein and all the other kids uh, of the Sahaba to be raised in the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's a blessing in and of itself. Absolutely blessing. Right. Our biggest problem, and this is uh, a, a call out to all of the imams and the uh, mosque, you know, mosque committees. And allow the, the children to have a place in the masjid with tarbiyah. The biggest problem is, is that, that people say, uh, Sheikh, they, they, the children come, but they, they, you know, they run amok on us. We can't pray properly. We can't do any lessons properly. But that's the tarbiyah. The tarbiyah is when there's nothing else to do, let them play. But when there is tahfid happening, you bring them and you say to them, sit. The masjid is a place of worship. And if the person is reading Quran, then it is his right to read Quran in peace and quiet. So you need to be quiet. We are going to pray now, so now stand up and pray. Because the time for playing or the time even for reading the Quran has stopped. Now it is time for prayer. And anyone who's praying in the masjid, it is their right to pray with you know tranquility and calm. So this is the tarbiyah. Don't, wallah, say, I want to bring my kids to the masjid and why don't you let my kids come to the masjid? And then, mashallah, you're standing in salah and your kid is running amok uh, behind everyone. Yelling and screaming and, and, and climbing the walls and the chandeliers. And, and then you tell me, Wallah, why are you telling me to leave and take my son? Hammi, the whole point of coming to the masjid is not about, Wallah, your masjid, you know, the masjid is like a big child kiss in it. It's a place of tarbiyah. So we do want the kids. Wallahi, we are so happy that when we see the kids uh, walk into the masjid. But it's upon the imam, it's upon the, the committee, it's upon the parents, it's upon the other brothers and the sisters to give tarbiyah. Uh, you're not going to be you know, giving them uh, uh, tarbiyah in, in, you know, forcefully. You only see them for five minutes. So you come and you give them uh, the words of al-hikmah wal mawad al-hasan. You give them wisdom. My child, come here. Give them a lolly. Give them a chocolate. Put some lollies in your pocket. Give them the chocolate. Sit down. While we pray, I don't want you to hear anything. And if I finish salah and you haven't said anything, I'm going to give you another lolly. Ya ammi, tarbiyah. Because wallahi, you could either be as an individual and an imam or a committee or a masjid, you could be uh, a person that is calling people to the house of Allah and welcoming them into the house of Allah and allowing the love of the masjid to you know, thrive in their heart. Or you could be the person that is the exact opposite. Wallahi, I know brothers that have told me that ever since they were small, they've hated going to the masjid because of a certain person or, a certain, or certain people and they have never gone back to that masjid. Five, six, ten years, they will never go to the masjid because of the action of one person. Is this an excuse? No, it's not an excuse. If you know right and wrong, you can't use that as an excuse. But I'm talking about the children. I'm talking about the children, not an adult. I'm talking about the children. 
Uh, and so inshallah, yes, we allow it to be the hub of the community. We allow it to be the center of the community for everyone. For everyone, both the young, the old, the men and the women. Now, we've, we've given a general introduction, the importance of living near the masjid, making the masjid the, the heart piece or the centerpiece of, of our communities, allowing our children to grow and nurture and be active in the masjid. Where do you move to next? Well, first of all, I want to split up the, the, the role of the masjid into three. The role of the masjid in general into three, especially here in Australia. So in the West, uh, but in general around the world, specifically here in Australia, but generally around the world. Uh, we have three categories of people that uh, the mosque uh, needs to attend to. You have those upon deen, alhamdulillah. Uh, those upon tawheed, alhamdulillah. And there's many in the community. Wallahi, there's many. Uh, sometimes we see them in the masjid, sometimes we don't. But the masjid, its structure, uh, its structure itself, without even hearing the adhan in Australia, we're not allowed. But without even hearing the adhan, the structure itself, the bricks and mortar itself, uh, is a way of strengthening the iman. It is. When you drive past Masajid, uh, you as a Muslim living in Australia, it strengthens your iman. Alhamdulillah, we have a presence. It gives you that steadfastness. So even if you are upon Islam, you're upon Tawheed, but don't you need th strengthening? You need strengthening. Uh, you need a Thabat. Muhammad used to ask for Thabat. Always. And he used to command the, the companions to ask for Thabat. Ask for steadfastness in Islam. So when you see the masjid uh, and you see the structure in front of you, without even entering it, you say to yourself, Alhamdulillah, we have a presence. And it gives you strength. That's the first category. Apart from the fact that when they enter the masjid, these people upon deen find a place to establish their deen. He wants to establish the salah. Where are you going to establish the salah? In the houses. The houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the ones that... Uh, Business and money and women uh, don't deter them from the remembrance of Allah. Don't deter them from the remembrance of Allah. These are the men that Allah SWT is talking about in the Quran. Rijal. La tulhi. Tijara wala bay wala wala ahl wala. No, no women, no tijara, no money, nothing. From what? From dhikrillah. Wa iqam is salat. Distractions are a problem ah. today. Yeah. Entertainment, sport. That's it. Daniel, when you, when you drive, when you drive as a person, uh, you know, and you're a football player, and you drive, uh, you know, past this big stadium that's getting built, don't you get excited? You go, look at that, that's a big stadium. Now, you're a person that rides bike and you go past the velodrome, they're building a velodrome, and you go, look at that, that's pretty good. You might never use it, but you go, you know what, that's, that's a pretty good, you know, uh, you know, setup. That's actually prof professional, you know, everybody does that. You know, people love movies and they see this big cinema that's opening up with, you know, recliner seats and, you know, popcorn the size of, you know, uh, you know a Mini Cooper. And, you know, uh, well, they get happy. They might never enter it. They might enter it once in their life just for the experience. But they get happy. Why? Because it supports their, their, their passion. As a Muslim upon deen, when we see the houses of Allah being built, when we see the houses of Allah being purchased, why do you think people online, uh, online, uh, when they see there's an there's a, a masjid being you know purchased, he might not put a dollar, but he's so happy. The sister's so happy. She might not be able to help with a dollar, but then she sees that Alhamdulillah, the big message. Alhamdulillah, we were able to secure the land. Alhamdulillah, we were able to build this masjid. Alhamdulillah. You know we have our brothers from you know uh, Kawamin. Uh, they're building a, a masjid for a, a brother that passed away here in Australia. Wallahi, the Muslims are so happy that they're collecting the money and alhamdulillah they've got the money to build a masjid. Where? In Gambia. We get happy. Establishing the house of Allah gets you happy. Why? Because it's an innate nature of a Muslim that when the structure that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves, uh, that is promised you that if you build one in this dunya, he's going to give you a palace in, Jan in Jannah, then... You get happy when you see it being built. So imagine a person upon Dean driving past in his locality. Uh, we live here in, in, in Sydney. You drive past one street, uh, you see a masjid. You drive past another street, you see a masjid. You drive past another street, you see a masjid. You say, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. How beautiful is this? Uh, how beautiful is this? Masajid. Uh, uh, houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If only they all uh, call to Tawheed of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then this is the dream of every Muslim. So the first category are those that are upon the deen already. Alhamdulillah. The second category 
are those who are far from the deen. They're Muslim, but they're far from the deen. The house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala becomes a beacon of guidance for them. Salvation. A place to run to uh, when they need help. Seek support. They come to the house of Allah. And that is why uh, you see some brothers or sisters, they come to the house of Allah for the very first time. And they sit in the house of Allah, they read the Quran, they pray with the Musalli. You don't know who they are. First time they've ever come. You think they're a traveler. <coughs> you think they're from outside the area. You might, if you have the courage and if you have the يعني, the adab, the akhlaq, and you go up to him, Salam alaikum, brother, salam alaikum, sister. Uh, MashaAllah, uh, you've come from uh, where? Where have you come? And they tell you, I live here. SubhanAllah, where? I live in the area. First time I've seen you. How long? Wallah. But for them, they went through a thing in their life. Maybe a death. Maybe a divorce. Maybe problems at home with their, with their parents. Allah wa'ala. We don't know. Wallah, every person that walks into the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has their own stories. We should be welcoming. Wallah, we should be welcoming with a smile. And sometimes, wallahi, يعني, you have some brothers يعني, that unintentionally, the way they look at you when you walk into the masjid, it is as if they're questioning your, يعني, your, your, your whole intention of walking in. Where have you been? Look, who are you? Who are you? I don't know you. Uh, rather, we should be smiling and welcome them in. And don't put too much pressure on them. Maybe they don't want to talk to you. They came to talk to Allah. They didn't come to talk to you. They don't want to tell you their problems. They came here to tell Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala their problems. They came here to prostrate to Allah in the house of Allah. So allow them. And if they walk away uh, without talking to you, say may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala relieve them whatever they have. So for those who are not upon the deen, and even for the first category, they do this. They come to for that malad. They come to that, يعني, that, that, that shelter uh, in the house of Allah. So this structure is like, uh, you remember يعني, when you were growing up, now they don't have it. But when you were growing up, uh, you used to come back from school walking and on each house, there's the neighborhood watch uh, symbol. Do you see? Remember that? Yeah, of course. Uh, the green one that they had before that, there was an the orange one or something. I don't know what colors. Uh, and if you see that, uh, you know that's a safe house, meaning the government. I don't know how how safe that was, but because uh, I think everybody could have uh, applied for it. Probably wasn't very safe. Uh, anyway. But uh, they had it on the house, and uh, it was for for safety of the community. It's to say that if you're ever in need as a you know as community member, and if you see this symbol on the letterbox or the house of the house, you can run in there and you find safety. The house of Allah is for everyone. That's what it is. You don't have to have that symbol. The fact that it is there, the fact that the structure is there, uh, it is a place that I could come off the street, walk in there, and found salvation because I'm turning to Allah SWT. It's a bonus when we have the imam or the management that are caring, loving, accommodating. That's a bonus. But the fact that you're in the house of Allah, the fact that you turn to Allah, and as we say, if you're entering the house of Allah, that means you're the guest of who? Allah the guest of Allah. Allah. How are you going to leave the house of Allah? Uh, being any kind of uh, feeling any kind of stress or distress or feeling any kind of sadness Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala won't allow that to happen you come with a sincere heart so the second category are those who are not upon the deen that needs that support it's a beacon of of knowledge guidance that is why we ask the masajid where are your lessons where are your lessons where are the durus where are the lectures where are the halaqat you know where are those who sit around in circles uh, and they, they call you know, upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they, they call to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where? A masjid cannot be a masjid uh, just because they want to iqamah the salah. That's it. You know, I, all I want to do is I want to pray my five daily prayers and we do the Jum'ah and that's it. We close the masjid, brother. You know, why? Isn't it Muhammad sallallahu that said that no group of people gather in the houses of Allah fi bayta min buyutillah uh, and then they study the words of Allah except that the angels descend upon them. Uh, so much so that the wings of the angels are touching one another. And they actually call other angels and say, come here, we have found what you're looking for. And we know that long hadith. Subhanallah. Where is that? Baytun fi buyut min buyutillah. It's in the house and the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the, the management should accommodate these lessons. And if you have no one to do these lessons, then call other du'at and call other mashayikh. Please, Establish a lesson in my masjid. Get barakah of this lesson in my masjid. Allow the angels to, ascend, to descend upon you know, the people in my masjid. Yes, the angels come the, the time of salah. Yes, we know that. But we want something else. 
So yes, it needs to be not only a place of prayer for those who are uh, not guided yet or those who are uh, seeking guidance, but a place of knowledge. And that is why inside the masjid, and we'll just you know mention this generally, inside a masjid, there must be a, a library. There has to be a library. Whether small or big, there has to be a library. The Quran is not enough because the majority of the brothers and the sisters don't understand uh, the Quran, first of all, in Arabic. So even if they read it, they don't understand. They need something to interpret that Quran. Okay, where are the books of Tafsir? And then put the languages that people understand. If you're in a community and there are people that speak the English language, alhamdulillah. If there are people inside that community that, that speak Bengal, then put Bengali. Uh, Urdu, put Urdu. Turkish, put Turkish. Indonesian, put Malay, put Indonesian. You need to put what they can then relate to because it's a source of guidance when they enter the masjid. And that is why you will notice around the world, you always have Qur'ans in the masjid and you always have uh, books of knowledge. Whether it's Riyadh al-Salihin, whether it's uh, the shuruh of some of the, the actual books of Ahadith, Sharh al-Nawawi, Imam Muslim, or Sharh uh, Ibn Hajar. There has to be books. You always see them. But as a Muslim, <coughs> from the first category and the second category, why don't we utilize them? This is the strange thing. We need to utilize them for them to be uh, serving its purpose. Third category is those who are not Muslim. The house of Allah should be a place that whenever they enter, they will find guidance. Not necessarily they will be guided, but they will find guidance. Meaning, if I'm running a masjid and I'm in Australia, the person that's in the masjid, either the management or the imam or the secretary, the administration or the da'iyah needs to know the language of the person that's walking in. If the people that are walking in are Australian, that means they speak English, I need to have someone that understands English. And if I don't, I need to have material about Islam, da'wah material. I need to have the Quran in English. I need to have books of Islam in English. Why? Because when this person entered the masjid, he entered for a reason. He entered because something told him, I want to go in there and see what these Muslims do. I want to notice. I want to learn. I want to know what these people do. It has been a massive improvement over the last 20 years in, in being able to oh, speak uh, different languages now. Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Growing up wasn't as easy. It wasn't. And, and, and giving da'wah wasn't easy. Now, alhamdulillah, it's becoming a lot more easier. And this is why I think these ca three categories... Uh, serves a purpose for the Muslims. Of course, there are other, you know, each category then splits up into many categories, but these are the, the general three categories. Those are upon deen, upon uh, tawheed. Uh, the masjid is to strengthen them. The ones who are not upon deen, far from the religion, is to give them that guidance. And the ones who are not even Muslims, it is the key to Islam. Yeah, to come and acknowledge Islam and know about Islam. So we have to be like beacons of light of for all. Whether people accept Islam or not, that's not the issue here. Guidance is in the hands of Allah, but the path has to be shown in these masajid, in these marakis. Yeah, of course, definitely. So everyone that walks past, for example, and depending where you are, you may have uh, you know, a, a large amount of people walking I past still your remember, masjid. I still remember the conversation I had with Brother Ziyad uh, uh, Shmaisi. Uh, Ziyad, uh, mashallah, went to New Zealand after the, the uh, you know, the terrorist. Uh, we had him on here. Yeah, uh, he was on. He was under, on here on the, the program. Michelle, with Michelle, under Brother the Nur, and, yes. they, and they discussed it. And they discussed detail. it. But one thing he mentioned that I never forget, um, and this is what uh, triggered the conversation with him when he was there, and then triggered also the conversation of when he came back and with the rest of the du'at, that he was standing outside calling people to the masjid. I come in, uh, and let us talk about Islam, uh, at the Nur Masjid, uh, the Nur Masjid that was in, uh, in our Christ Church. The main masjid that was sadly uh, the center of this terrorist act. One person who was a neighbor uh, came to Ziyad walking towards him, him and his wife, crying. Crying uncontrollably. They walked up to him and they said, we are so sorry. We have been your neighbors for 15, 20 years and we did not enter uh, your masjid. We didn't even say hello. So subhanAllah, Allah subhanahu ta'ala gave uh, uh, some uh, guidance to Ziyad and he said to them, he goes, subhanAllah, he goes, no, no, no. He goes, we are sorry. That for the past 15, 20 years, we never invited you to the house of Allah. So it's not about just having the structure and just waiting for people to come. Where is the active calling people to the masjids? So we must engage with the community. You must feel, they must be welcomed. Must be welcomed. At the end of the day, if they're not going to seek guidance from the house of Allah, where are they going to seek guidance? Yeah, and even the brothers, even the brothers that do the street da'wah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and reward them. Wallahi, 
it is a task that majority of us won't be able to do. It takes a lot of time and effort and energy. Patience. As well. Patience and knowledge. You need to know what you're saying when you're talking to these people. So to all the brothers doing the street da'wah, Allahu Akbar, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give, keep you steadfast. But if they were to then, uh, you know, link themselves with the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and as soon as someone feels interested, they give them a card of a local masjid that they are. Which area are you from? Brother, I live in, uh, you know, I, I live in Auburn. Okay, these are the masajid in Auburn. Go to them. Link them directly to the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where are you from? I'm from the Bankstown area. Well, there's, in Bankstown, there's, there's 25, you know, prayer halls and, and, and mosques. You go visit them. You know, where are you from? I'm from the, you know, the south coast, north coast, the east. Link yourselves to a masjid. Why? Because when you leave them uh, from the, in front of the, the, you know, wherever you are, the train station or the bus station or the mall, when you leave them, where are they going? You know, if they've left and they have something burning in them to know more about Islam, you want to link them to a grounded place, to a structure that is never going to move, and that is the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then to the people that are inside the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and your job is done as a da'iyah. Yeah, and you've now introduced a person potentially uh, to a place of guidance where you will get the reward either way. So I do ask the brothers that and, and the sisters that do street da'wah, uh, to link yourselves up to the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that are upon Ahl sunnah that are upon Tawheed, that are upon correct uh, you know, uh, uh, understanding of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's uh, uh, oneness. Allow them to understand that this is where you're headed. You know, you know a reflection that I've had over the past few months, and that is that, yes, all these, all these things are, are good at teaching online, you know, um, using Facebook and other social media tools to give da'wah, but in reality, there's nothing like the masjid. Oh, nothing. Nothing. That's what nothing, I've. Nothing. That's a the main lesson I've learned in the last three four months. You you could even even with secular knowledge go ask any university student doing uh, you know uh, work online. I started part of my course and I was doing my masters in 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 English in Tesla. Uh Part of it was uh, online and part of it was in class. Yeah, I mean, in line is it's unless you are a person that has uh, a lot of you know uh, self you know push and 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 you know. You can't. You, you, you're not taking it as seriously as you if you're in class. That's the first thing. That's secular. With Islam, there's something extra. You Very need true. to be. You need to be in the presence of uh, of a person who then passes on to you akhlaq before he passes on to you uh, uh, the religion of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That's how the religion's been passed. That's down, how it's been it? passed on through the centuries. Even at the time of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi the women at the time of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi they would say to Rasulullah, they said, Ya Rasulullah, and this is how important the message is. Uh, and for the sisters that keep on you know, uh, saying that, you know, where is our place? Where is our place? Uh, Alhamdulillah, the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala do accommodate for the sisters. They do. But we want the sisters also to, to take ownership. So here, Muhammad uh, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's not the one that established the place in the masjid for the sisters. It was one of the companions, the sisters. She said, Ya Rasulullah, you've given so much time to the men, the men have taken your time away from us. So al- allocate... Some of your time uh, for us. He said, choose a day uh, and I will come to you. Where would he go? To the masjid, to the house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so, yes, it's for uh, the masjid. is accommodating for all of the, the mujtama, all of the, uh, the brothers and the sisters. Uh, and like I said, yani, uh, when we start to understand the importance of that masjid, you're right. Uh, online just doesn't. You know, this doesn't cut it. Uh, and I told the brothers, you could study online and you can get certificates and you can get uh, your awards and diplomas and even your bachelor's, master's and doctorate. You can. But then sit with a, with a, with a brother that st- sat at the feet of the mashayikh and the ulama. Yani, we're not belittling those who have, mashallah, studied online. Yani, this is a, a task in itself. This is an achievement in itself. Allahu Akbar. But we're saying the scholars... Uh, they had this, uh, you know, even when the, you know, the, the scholars of hadith, when they would go to a person to collect the hadith, uh, they won't just collect the hadith. It's not like playing a tape recorder, just give me the hadith and walk away. The, the, you know, if you look at you know, uh, the, the stories of uh, Imam Bukhari, Imam Muslim, they would actually write down who they took the hadith from. They'll mention his character. They'll mention the way he looks. They'll mention the way he would act. Mention, and the very famous hadith, the very famous story, sorry, uh, of 
يعني, uh, you know, going to a person, traveling the distances, finding out that he lies to an animal. He goes, how could I take a hadith of Muhammad Sallallahu of a person who's lying to, a, to an animal? Oh. When he was hiding in his hand in his cloak and he's saying, what are you doing? He goes, he won't walk to me and he thinks that he's got, uh, I've got the, you know, the hay or the, the, the grass. He said, how could I come and take hadith of a person who's lying to an animal? Uh, it's not about just, you know, uh, taking the information. It's about from who you're taking that information. And when you're sitting in front of the person, uh, you actually then take from them uh, not only their character. You can sense their sincerity. You can sense their love and emotion attachment to this, what they're, what they're teaching. This is the difference. The difference is, and then you're also... Uh, safeguarding that imam as well That sheikh and that da'iyah You're safeguarding him You're giving him that strength uh, That he's able to see students in front of him That are also taking it seriously And he's helped one another So yes, you're right yeah, and The online thing is a blessing in one way Because it allowed us to continue our work But because we were forced And now that we're not forced I think the brothers should understand uh, That their uh, natural place For seeking knowledge uh, And learning more about Islam Is the masjid is the house of Allah. Uh, uh, Sheikh Muhammad Al-Manajid, he mentions in one of his lectures concerning the Masajid, he said that he, he remembers uh, uh, you know, someone telling him that in Mauritania, uh, in Shankit, that the Masjid itself would have a window, uh, a window that would be facing the street where people uh, you know, would walk past and the Imam after the Salah would just sit on a seat uh, next to the window and people will come to the window and ask him questions. You know, just to have that, you know, connection with the imam and connection with the masjid. I think it's sad they had those booths as well. They had the booths, yeah, yeah. And this is what I'm saying. The thing, what I'm saying is that the, the, you know, the the place of the masjid is just, it's not as uh, confined to just salah as we might think, but rather it's, and this is a plot, uh, and we, if we don't want to talk a little bit political, but when you establish a, a, a house of a house of Allah Taala, and you only allow uh, the uh, the prayer and then people to leave. You're then falling into the trap of the secular notion of things that, yeah, uh, we leave the you know God in the, in the mosque, and when we leave the mosque, then yeah, we go to to man and and we forget about God. No, the the masjid itself is where Muhammad Sallallahu he treated the wounded after battle. The masjid is a place where Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi taught the companions. The masjid was a place where he actually established his plotting and and, and strategies before war. That's where he would meet. Uh, Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi in the masjid he will actually gather the, the brothers and the sisters the, the sahabiyat and the sahab to actually then encourage them to give for the sake of Allah SWT. so it was a place of mu'tamarat it was a place of you know uh, gathering and then lecturing them uh, outside of of course uh, you know the, the Friday prayers and the normal prayers Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi utilized the masjid for everything for everything not for just wallah you know the, 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 the clear cut acts of worship like reading of the Quran and uh, you know the the prayer and establishing the prayer alone, but rather we need to understand uh, the the masjid is not like a church, and it's not like a synagogue, it's not like a temple. The masjid is the center of the community, and the community has ownership of this place. It is not owned by anybody; it is owned by the community. It is upon management to safeguard the methodology of the masjid to allow the creed of Ahl Sunnah, the creed of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what he came with of Islam, to be established. But then it is place of the community where they feel security and establish also their deen. So we don't want to fall into the trap of, uh, you know, turning our message into just a place of walk in, pray, leave, and that's it. Rather, it is a place that where we build and bond and, you know, and, and establish the, the brotherhood, the sisterhood, uh, establish knowledge and establish, you know, uh, acti activities in the community uh, to then move on, inshallah, to strengthen the whole community. Really, there should be activities for the variety of age groups that are that are in the community. Yeah, of course, of course. Even if there isn't, you need to you need to welcome them, accommodate them. And even if someone is like you know, from the brothers and sisters' point of view, that you're looking, you know, at your local masjid and you're saying, you know, what, one, two, three, uh, we can do this, we can do that. Bring the idea forward. A of lot course. of times, people just sit back and complain. Not that only they don't yeah, actually... this is the problem. Don't bring the idea. Bring your idea and the manpower, and the woman power. So we don't get any fall into them problems. Sisters, if you have an idea for the masjid uh, and you feel that you can you know, establish something in the masjid, bring that idea and enough sisters to support you uh, in the action itself because the majority of the time, the committee uh, are all volunteers. 
So they come and do this, you know, after their initial, uh, you know, their, their actual primary source of income. This is just voluntary. So when you come to them and say, oh, I've, oh, I've got these amazing ideas, and the committee will say, yes, they are amazing ideas. Do you have anybody to run them? Oh, no, I just got the idea. Well, we don't have anybody. If we had anybody, we would have done it ourselves. We don't have the manpower, the women power. We don't have the hands that, that are enough to do this. So, yes, play a role in your masjid. Come up to them and say, I think we should do one, two, three. And I have one, two, three, you know, sisters, brothers to do this. Can you accommodate for this? And alhamdulillah, the majority of these centers, the masajid, the, these, you know, these community hubs will allow it. Not only allow it, will support it with what they can. So you're right. You know, we need to play an active role, a more active role uh, in the establishment of these, the, the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Jamil, it's been a fascinating discussion. We've been almost an hour. What else do we have? Allah. There's no time limit. You can... Take long well, as you need, yeah, long this, as you, want. you can't. You can keep on. You know, you can keep on talking forever about the houses of Allah I don't want to take for too long. I know that you know um, uh, the brothers are not used to for this. You know, nine o'clock already. It's, it's getting cold. Uh, people are sitting <laughs> back, uh, but we need to realize. Uh, and if we realize this, I think that's enough. That establishing a house of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala uh, is rewarded in Jannah, and we always say that. Everyone knows the hadith. Because every time we go to a fundraiser for a masjid, they say the same hadith. But what you're actually doing, uh, you're guaranteed the paradise because of the house that you're going to be built in paradise. Okay, But what you're doing, you're safeguarding uh, uh, the three categories that we spoke about. You're safeguarding the identity of Islam in your community. Especially the children. Wallah. Yani, not just everybody. Wallah, we are, we are at a stage where we're, we're at a constant cultural fight. Yeah, and he, uh, how would I say? Yeah, and even uh, you know, psychological warfare with with certain individuals and certain governments and certain agencies. We're in a constant uh, ideological fight. Uh, certain you know, even creed fight within. Yeah, the masjid is the place where we establish ourselves, and the masjid is what gives us you know that that strength to say no, no, we're here. We're not going anywhere. If there were no masjid, uh, people would rely upon what we're doing at the moment with COVID. Uh, Stick to your homes. Uh, try to safeguard your family at your home. And I'll tell the brothers and sisters, how many of them were, were asking uh, Allah SWT that the mosques open so they can allow their kids to go and be taught again by the mashayikh and the du'at? Because they tried, they couldn't. Ramadan came, majority of the... Allah, some brothers came up to me and said, Sheikh, wallahi, this Ramadan, I tried my best. But I didn't feel anything. It's different. It's different. Yes, we say it's an opportunity for the brothers to connect with their families. They said, all right, one day, two days. But I needed Ramadan. Uh, when he says that word, you ask him, all right, my Ramadan is a Ramadan. It's a month. It's not a place. I needed the atmosphere of the masjid. The That's what they were saying. So when they say, I needed Ramadan, I need Ramadan every year to give me that boost. I didn't get it this year. Because they missed the atmosphere. When you walk into the masjid and the imam is reciting from the Quran, and you straight, straighten the line, you stand up, say Allahu Akbar, and the Imam starts reading and reading, and you're, mashallah. Then you see, they finish the prayer, uh, then you see the brothers, and you congratulate one another, and you shaking hands, and then uh, sometimes there's food, uh, you know, so there's more, you know, communication with the brother. You needed that. So the masjid here now, as I said, it strengthens you. Iman wise, it strengthens you. So when you're stuck at home now with COVID, so imagine there was no mosques at all. Imagine there was never a mosque. What would you do? You're relying upon your own weak self to establish the, the commandments of Allah Taala, And you, as a Muslim, you need the community, you need the imams, you need the du'at, du you need your, your, you know, your brothers, your sisters to strengthen you. You know, you know we, we mentioned that briefly, but just before we finalize... Uh... To show the importance of, of the masjid, uh, you mentioned that briefly that when the Prophet ﷺ made hijrah to Medina, he done three main things that I yes. mentioned in the books of history, yes. the books of Sirah. One, first thing was the building of the masjid, and you yes. mentioned the story there. Yes. Then the brotherhood the, uh, the, between the, the Ansar and the Muhajirin, those who made the migration from Mecca to Medina and the helpers of Medina. Where did that occur? That occurred in the masjid. In the so masjid. Yeah. And then the rules to govern the of society. Course. Of course. You know, the Muslim and Muslims, the Muslims with other than the yeah, Muslims, such yeah. as the Jews that live there in Medina. So look how important it was to establish the masjid in the first, the, in, the, in the Islamic state. Because if you, in and, all right, you, you, you made the brotherhood. Okay. But where are they going to go to? 
We are, we are a nation that that structure means so it's so important for us. Yeah, I if in a battle, forget about it. In a battle, in a battle, throughout history, throughout history, in a battle, uh, if the flag bearer drops, the battle is lost. That's a flag. Do you know why? Because the flag being carried high uh, is a symbol of what? Strength. That's a human carrying a flag. And it gave you strength. And that is why in battle, everything is done to keep that flag being raised. And we know the story of the, you know, the, the Battle of Mutta and, the, and what happened uh, and it, well, over there with, with Subhanahu al-Ja'far al-Tayyar and, and, and Bilal. We know that story. No, not Bilal, sorry. Abdullah ibn, uh, Rawah, ibn Rawah. Uh, But that's a flag in a battlefield. Right. We're in a society that has a battle as well. And, and our flag, uh, our alama of our deen and our, of our placement in the society is the house of Allah. And to uh, establish the house, and I think we'll end it with this one because the ulama spoke about these two points. Uh, the establishment of the masjid is in two things. You establish it physically, so you build it, but then you establish it spiritually by praying in it, by learning in it, by you know, gathering in it, by building the brotherhood in it, by establishing the sharia of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in it. Uh, so you need to have strength. Yes, you establish the houses of Allah. But after you establish it, you just leave it. No, you establish the, the, the building, the structure, all right. But then I need to establish uh, the spiritual uh, factor of it. And how do I do that? Through the prayer, through the establishment of the wajibat, the obligatory actions, uh, and also with the uh, Islamic ties and the Islamic uh, and notions and, and teachings, all of it inside the house of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Zakallah khair, Sheikh Jameel. It's been once again an honor and privilege to have you and very beneficial discussion on the importance of the masjid. Since we're discussing the masjid very quickly, what's happening at Masjid al Salam in Wuhan? Alhamdulillah, Masjid al Salam, like uh, many other masajid, uh, have opened up, Alhamdulillah. This 50 restrictions now is, is beautiful. So we've opened up all the all the times of prayer, Alhamdulillah, even Jum'ah. Jum'ah, uh, you know, now we have a registry, of course. We, we need to only allow 50 uh, in any at any one time. So we will be having two prayers so we'll have uh, you know uh, two different uh, times uh, to allow more people to come and pray Jum'ah inshallah but alhamdulillah this week is the establishment of the prayer next week we introduce all of our lessons back into the masjid and inshallah yani yeah, things are getting uh, back to normal slowly once again I'd like to thank Sheikh Jameel Zakallah and all the brothers and sisters for tuning in until next time barakallahu feekum assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Al Bayan Radio the voice of Ahlus Sunnati wal Jama'ah